right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Marketing Cheat Codes. My name is Ed Brialt, and I'm here with Christina Hoodart. She is damn good at what she does. I had to go there and say that. Uh, but independent damn consultant, um, thought leader in the space. Today's session is going to be very much about digital asset management, and we're going to go quite deep in this section. Christina, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me, Ed. Absolutely. And um, this is Cheat Codes, and want to go a little bit back on your, uh, maybe something in your in your past or current, any video games or um, other multimedia that's uh, fascinated you throughout the years? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to video games, I've uh, I've actually tried to stay away from getting sucked in too much in my adult life because I think it would I would spend a lot of time gaming. Um, but when I think about video games, I think back to when I was like six or seven years old and we got our first Nintendo, one of those kind of gray boxes. You remember those? <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, my older brother pretty much dominated it, so I got very little time on it. <laughs> but um, when I did, uh, we would play Super Super Mario Brothers. And uh, I got to be Luigi, of course, because nice. <laughs> my brother was Mario. Um, and then we'd play Duck Hunt, too. And, and yeah. that was kind of like before cheat codes were a thing. At least I don't remember them being a thing because that was before the internet. So we couldn't just look up what were the cheat codes. Right. I rem you had to, um, you had to buy like the Nintendo book and get the cheat codes once a month. I had one for Contra, um, and uh, but those games, like, you had to like you had to blow the dust out of the inside of them every time <laughs> to get them to work. <laughs> Kids don't have that problem today. Everything's just in the cloud. Uh, so super cool. Uh, I'm excited to have you on, um, and uh, let's talk a little bit about you first. Um, What's your origin story? How did you get to be taking some big stages, presenting on DAM, being an educator, a thought leader in the space? Where did your career start and how did that arc move for you? Yeah, so that's an interesting one. So I didn't start out in marketing. Um, I started out as kind of like an eco warrior. I was like a little hippie um, back in the day. So I, uh, I wanted, I went and got a career in as an environmental scientist and I thought I was oh, going to wow. save the world, uh, <laughs> uh, like we all do, I think, when we're young and naive. Um, yeah, so I was an environmental scientist, and also I did um, digital mapping analysis, uh, what I think was used to, used to be called GIS, but I think probably has all sorts of different names now. Um, and I was I was spending my days outside every day, um, doing manual labor, wearing hiking boots, stomping across kind of squelchy wetlands and avoiding death by alligator. Uh <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're, you're saving the world from terrible content experiences. That's fair to say. There we go. There we go. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the hope anyway, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And then, um, it's a funny kind of winding story how I got into into DAM, but um, I ended up uh, moving from my environmental career in the U.S., uh, moved to Switzerland to get my degree in my master's degree in uh, alpine botany, and then um, ended up getting my first DAM role uh, at a botanical garden in London called Kew Gardens. So oh, I was wow. working with scientists. So that really spoke to my sciencey side, um, but suddenly I was dealing with different kind of data than I was used to. So, um, but but still data and relationships and yeah, it all it all kind of transitioned into that. That's very cool. So in a botanical garden, that's for folks that don't know. Can you unpack that a little bit? And then how did so digital asset management folks think about that as maybe something that's applied to? Uh, to large brands who have a lot of content, but a botanical garden. Let's start there. How did, like, how does dam and a botanical garden even become in the put in the same uh, sentence? Yeah. So, 
When we think about assets, I guess mostly we're thinking about digital assets, um, but botanical gardens and also, I mean, this applies to any kind of archives, museums, galleries, the cultural heritage sector has been dealing with physical assets for a long time. So they've got collections of all sorts of things. And for a botanical garden, they've got collections of living plants and they also have collections of um, dried and pressed plants in their herbarium. And, um, and for a botanical garden, uh, this one in, in London, they have specimens going back uh, over 200 years. Um, they have specimens that Darwin collected. And these are really valuable, sensitive objects. And, you know, they, they're at risk um, because they're, they're out in the world. And, you know, if there's a fire, um, they could disappear. Or if there's a flood or humidity or bugs might eat the, the pressed plants. And so they decided that the best way to, um, to, to, store and preserve and make sure that you know their their legacy was protected was to um, digitize everything so they digitized their whole collection um, and of course they're taking modern day photography they're doing lots of marketing as well um, but for them digital asset management really stemmed out of uh, collection management and and that's where it all started so I got to work with plants but um, on the digital side of things. That's cool. It, for some folks, sometimes digital asset management needs to be demystified. I, I think that's an amazing example of how you can think about what just a place to park content is just some file store with what a, what a dam does. There's multi dimensions and collections and this idea that um, you have content stored and there's metadata layers, taxonomy classifications, and that content needs to have interchangeable parts potentially um, and um, cont content modularity potentially. And it's, it's a much more complicated, well, in a good way, sophisticated approach to managing, collecting stuff, assets. In this case, it was um, in a botanical garden. That's awesome. Mm. And then... Um, so then we moved from the botanical garden and then where did we, where did your career arc move from there? Yeah. So that was about nine years ago now. And since then I've really built digital asset management as my second career. Um, and, and now I'm an independent consultant um, and I help companies to solve all sorts of marketing operations problems that they're having mostly focused around the foundation of their um, MarTech stack. So usually around DAM, um, but also getting into more of the nuts and bolts um, around the people process and data. So it's not just about the technology and, and how to make marketing activities easier. You know, we're trying to make everybody's lives a bit easier. Absolutely, making it easier. And so this is cheat codes. This is marketing cheat codes. You have a cheat code. There's something that you do. There's a, I'll call it like an Uber cheat code, so to speak. Um, what is your, what is your cheat code for this audience? And let's unpack it a little bit. Yeah. So my cheat code that I wanted to talk about today is um, doing a health check on your dam system. And so a way to think about this is, is if we go back to our old Nintendo games uh, and having to blow the dust off before you can plug it in and it works. Right. It's, it's the same with any sort of technology. If you if you leave it on the shelf, it's going to get dusty. And um, and the idea of a health check really is to is to keep keep an eye on it, make sure that it's, it's still moving in the right direction. And so um, you can think of this like with your own fitness. So when I think about my fitness right now, my fitness stats are down. Uh, the days are getting a little bit shorter, so I'm not going outside as much, not moving around, feeling a little bit sluggish and. I've got um, a bit of a dull pain from an ankle injury right now. And that's when you kind of know when you start to see these symptoms that you need a health check. And if I just don't do anything, things will probably actually get worse. Um, so I need to really reset my body. And that's the same with, with your dam operations. So the idea is that, you know, you start to look for symptoms of things going maybe a little bit awry um, in your quarterly or monthly dam reports. 
So you might start seeing things like your searches and downloads have dipped, or maybe new content isn't actually going into the dam. You know, somebody, somebody's somebody gone rogue and they're storing everything in Google Drive somewhere. Um, and maybe, maybe there's another part of the business, actually, that went off and got their own um, technology that maybe has a mini dam built into it. And now you're not really sure, where do I store my, my digital assets and which tool do we use for what? So these are the kind of symptoms that we're seeing in, in the dam industry. This is pretty common, right? So um, the idea is to take that step back and just to do a holistic dam health check, um, to just take a look at the whole thing. So looking at that full picture, it can actually show some really interesting results. Um, so whether you're kind of one year or five years into having a dam, you know, on closer inspection, we might say, look, we're really sorry to say, but your test results are back and you've got some metadata deficiencies over here. You've oh got some new <laughs> unmapped processes over there. And maybe there's not enough governance. So you're not really sure what do I prioritize for next year? Um, and that's OK. You know, it's all right. I can prescribe you some colorful vitamins and supplements just to give your dam that extra boost. And um and, and what we're doing with the health check is the reason we do it is for three reasons. So, so firstly, it helps you to um, assess where you are right now with your dam. So in this moment in time, what is it looking like? Um, we look at plans for what's next in your dam journey and how to prioritize those things that are coming up next. So for example, if your company is getting deeper into e-commerce, Right, um, but you haven't really thought yet about making that integration between DAM and PIM. Um, then maybe there's a disconnect there, and those are the kind of things that I can identify with you um, doing a health check. And then the third reason is that you want to kind of realign your DAM roadmap to the the shared vision within the business. So making sure that you're connecting the vision for DAM back to your strategic objectives. And, um, and this is something that I've really started doing in collaboration with, um, with David Lipsy, a dam strategist. Yeah, um, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> David's <laughs> big in the industry. He's one of the He's awesome. original yeah. founders, yeah. And, Fans uh, of Dave. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, so this year we've been working together to use a, a framework for a health check that's called um, the Dam Capability Model. Uh, to, to help companies to optimize their dam operations. And a dam capability model is kind of like a maturity model, if you've ever used one of those. Um, it's basically... I love maturity models. Yeah. It's yeah, a love it's, and hate thing, is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, it gets back to your statement around, like, the if you apply health check to yourself. Because I love how you did that. Because it's sometimes it's like, be careful what you wish for. When we go through these health checks, these stress tests in life and or in business, it's, it's going to expose pain and weakness and deficiency. And, uh, but the great thing is those are the areas of opportunity to expose and then um, capitalize on. Right. So what, what are your thoughts at, when you get into that assessment period and you expose a lot of these opportunities, we'll call them right now, how do you, the prioritization for me has always been, I think, one of the most overwhelming mm. when, you, when you expose all the, the problems, right? How do you think about prioritization to get to, we'll call it the most meaningful, impactful, strategic things first as to not overwhelm your client, overwhelm the business, and then what you're a master at, the change, right? It's, we got to change everything, then it's so hard to even want to begin the journey. What's the, what's the prioritization process? look like for you with your clients? Yeah. So I think it, it really depends on where those, those um, kind of where things are lacking in the health check, right? So the health check actually has, uh, sorry, the dam capability model has um, 15 different elements and you've got people process data and then technology. And I think a lot of times when things are going wrong, there's this instant thought like, well, the tech must be the problem. The tech must be bad. We're going to get rid of it and 
put something else in its place and everything will be better. And yeah, it's like I'm, I'm a cyclist and my my uh, my speed's going down. It must be my bike. Yeah. I need to get carbon fiber. <laughs> I need to get a new chain. I need to blame it on the equipment. But yeah, you know, where's the root cause is what we need to get to. That's right. I mean, I'd love a carbon fiber bike, right? But yeah, if my, if my fitness is still pretty bad, then I'm not going to get anywhere much faster. But um, exactly. yeah, exactly. So, so the idea is really to look at where are those areas of opportunity um, and then think through how do those link back to the strategic objectives for the whole business and where are the most valuable opportunities. So it's really about return on investment. And um, that's kind of a fun thing to look at because uh, we all get distracted by those kind of shiny things in the roadmap. So it might be like, you know what? We really wanna be doing um, augmented reality uh, next year, right? And actually, where if you look at where you are now, and then where you need to be to to make something innovative like that work, there's that there's a few steps in between. And so it's about looking at that incremental roadmap, trying to figure out, okay, where are we now? How do we get to where we need to be? And which areas can we focus on? Are there any, when you've, you've done these health checks, uh, you've leveraged this damn capability model, and we're going to share this out with our, our audience to the uh, Center for Advanced Studies in Digital Asset Management as a, it's a, that's the maturity model you're referring to. That's right. Uh, super cool. Yeah. The four categories um, and within those categories of organization, information systems, processes, there's the, the, you know, the capabilities within those categories are there some that are just must have assessment areas do you know will always be needed? And then are there some that you would, would you go to some first is what I would, rec it, would, would you recommend that? Or do you already mm -hmm. know where mm -hmm. you want to expose, uh, where you want to do diagnostics or do you, is part of it, you have to do it all to really understand the holistic um, understanding of opportunity, deficiencies, pain points within a digital asset management. Um, system. Yeah, I think that's kind of a yes or a yes and a no in the sense that um, my favorite place to start, but this isn't necessarily yeah. the place to start for everybody, but my favorite place to start is to talk about um, use cases. So what are the use cases that you're using your dam for now? And what do you want to use it for in the future? So, you know, the most basic dam use case is using the, the dam as your media library. Um, and then, but actually maybe you're trying to do omni-channel publishing, right? Or, um, or maybe you're suddenly managing loads of uh, video assets uh, and how are you doing that? So I really like starting there because that makes, it gets people thinking about the big picture and you know that, I know it's really cliche, but blue sky thinking like, all right, where can we be? If we if we really put effort into into this area, what can if we you do never can that? see it, you're never going to get there, right? That's right. Yeah, exactly. And that's the idea with this whole thing is to is to keep your dam fresh. Um, don't let it sit on that shelf and get dusty. You know, keep it keep it working hard for you and and get the most out of the investment that you've made in it. And um, so that's where I like to start. But that's awesome. Yeah, to answer your question, I mean, really. I do recommend looking at all um, aspects. That doesn't mean that you know you necessarily need to prioritize all fifteen. You're going to pick a few uh, where the opportunities really are to focus on. But when you're doing the assessment, the health check, it's pretty important to know, um, you know, even down into the details. Like, well, how are we doing with our metadata, and do we have the right people um, on the team to make this work? You know, have we aligned our strategic objectives to to the dam, and do we have the the technical knowledge and and skill within the business to to make this reality? All those little details add up into making it a success. Yeah, I love that. Start with the the use cases. Now, you're also a master of change within organizations too. What's some of your advice for an audience who would go through an assessment, a diagnostic? come illuminate insights. Of course, 
in order to in- invest in them, it, it takes investment. It takes people change process um, impacts to the, the current state of affairs. What's your advice in terms of going through a change process, getting bought organizational buy-in What's some of that other, there's probably a cheat code in there too, <laughs> like to, you know, to, to put ideas in other people's heads that were yours and get them to follow you in a direction. Yeah, definitely. Change management is so fascinating. I've, um, I, this year I took an agile change management course and it, it's changed, completely changed the way that I think about change management. You know, I used to think change management was a communication plan. Um, but it's, you know, it's not that simple. There's so much more to it and there's this whole methodology behind it. And, you know, you see companies now who are hiring people whose title is change manager. Um, and that's, that's what they focus on. They help companies get through and, and deal with this constant change that we're all dealing with every day. Um, and it makes things so much smoother. So, so yeah, I definitely recommend thinking about change management when it comes to DAM. And I, I think it's a it's a shift in mindset when we think about a dam implementation, right? There's so much focus at the beginning when you first get a dam or you're replacing an old dam system. There's so much focus on that implementation phase, and you, you you've got a little team of project managers working on it. Um, you know, the whole business is excited about this new tool that they're going to get to use, um, and and then sometimes depending on how you do the, uh, a damn rollout, if it's kind of a big bang, you know, things, things go quiet after that. Um, but that's when you really need that change management support. You need a plan in place on how are you going to get people to buy into this thing? How are you going to get people to use it? Because if you, if you've got amazing tech, but nobody's using it, it's again, it's not worth the investment. So there's a lot of opportunity and, and some really interesting things going on in that change management space. And I definitely recommend for anybody who is implementing any sort of new technologies in your business, think about that long tail of, of change management and how how that's going to continue even after implementation. That's awesome. I've heard it so many times and you're, you're further um, giving this statement some points. Dam is a journey. It's not the, you, you have a problem with content, you get some technology, you activate it, you turn it on, you walk away. It's, it's really once that technology gets put in place, that's when the journey begins. And then all, all the places you'll go with that mm-hmm. and how the, because the organization could change, your commercial opportunities could change, your brands could change, your content types could change. Everything about what, where you started could be a different world. And it's, what it initially was built for isn't uh, isn't the reality anymore. So it's like a dam is a journey. And now, would you do these these assessments uh, with the model? Would you ever recommend a company who doesn't have a dam yet look at the model first? So it's kind of like the use it to build vision, use it to build consensus. And I'm a big I, I lo- I'm a big fan of that baselining mm-hmm. uh, where the organization is, and then put the dam in over time. So you can see that where did we start? And then maybe the case for change and was it worth the investment? Do we continue? You sort of start to see how the needle moves on the maturity scale once the dam's in place. And then you go through several learning uh, maturity cycles. Definitely. Would you start early? Yeah. That's a really, really good idea. I haven't actually done that with a, with a client yet, um, but I, I love that kind of perspective on it. And and absolutely, the dam capability model is applicable even before you have a dam. Um, and, and I think it's interesting because when you think about where companies are starting now, a lot of companies, even if they're not calling it dam, they have something in place that it, it might be a kind of a 15-year-old tool where assets um, are stored, or it might be Dropbox or Box or um, Google Drive it could be any of those places that you store your assets. And I think doing doing the health check or, or like you said, a baseline on where are we now is really useful because then you could also understand not only where you need to go, but what what are the incremental stages that you need to take and the steps you need to take, and um, and it really focuses 
particularly when you're talking to leadership uh, teams, it gets them to think beyond the technology. Because again, like there's so much focus usually right at the beginning, like let's implement this amazing new technology and then crickets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and there's so much more to building, building the team, having the right skill set, um, upskilling uh, staff mm-hmm. members, rolling it out to people, um, getting them to apply the right data and and use use the the data that's coming back out of the system to to help them to make more effective content. Um, Absolutely. It's just there's so much. <laughs> there is. And there's 15 capabilities in this model. We could we could literally do a, a show or a podcast on each of those capabilities. I'm up Maybe for it, we Ed. do that. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> We're going we're gonna to make the model available to everyone, and we're going to uh, provide additional information on that for sure. Uh, so, Christina, what are some other hot topics you have going on in your career right now? Uh, other things that are uh, you're really passionate about that um, uh, that you're moving your career forward with? Yeah, so the, um, the change management stuff, like I said, is really, really interesting right now. Um, but something else that I'm, I'm really excited about uh, and something that's taken place um, twice this year for the first time ever um, is my newest course. Um, so I'm teaching through the um, Rutgers University DAM certificate program, uh, which is for professionals who are already in their career, um, already started in DAM or maybe just have started hearing about DAM and want to get into it. Let's pause right there. So there's a certif- there's a Rutgers certification for digital asset management. Like that's that's cool. Like the the ability to credentialize oneself is um, in this. It's just an exploding category. Would would you say that? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, only nine years ago when I started my career in Dam, there was nothing like this. And. Um, you know, and I wish there was because I would have taken a crash course in in DAM just to get myself up to speed, really. Um, but now there's there's a BA. Um, so if you want to get your bachelor's degree in DAM, there's a, a the, I think the first ever of its kind um, DAM bachelor's program at Ryerson University in Canada. Um, and then there's there are even a couple master's programs now. I think there's one in Can- uh, California and one in here in London, if you really want to get academic with, uh, with DAM. But, and then now there's this, um, this Rutgers University professional DAM certificate program, which um, I think there's eight or nine different courses you can choose from. Uh, and if, if you take six of them, then you get a, a DAM cer- professional certificate. Um, afterwards, or you can just take the individual courses, whatever you like. Uh, and I'm really honored to be part of this. The the, co- the entire certificate program was co-founded by David Lipsy, again, the, the amazing David Lipsy, and, uh, and Yona Levinson. And, uh, and it's a brilliant program, all sorts of different uh, things that you can learn from the very, very basics to advanced studies um, and the course that I'm teaching is called Dam for Glam, uh, which is, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's Dam for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, uh, which is, that's where I started my Dam career was in cultural heritage. And I still work with some cultural heritage organizations now. And, um, again, it's just so fascinating and, you know, it's, it's a brilliant way to get your damn career kind of launched. I love that. Damn for glam. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to su- supply the audience with some information uh, as well for the Rutgers uh, classes. That's so cool. So many folks I know are really interested. Uh, so Christina, thank you so much for coming on marketing cheat codes today. And um, if folks want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to obviously your class and, but what's a great way to get in touch with you? They want to talk more. Yeah. Find me on LinkedIn. It's Christina with a K and Hoodart, H U double D A R T. Um, and I've got a website too. If you want to check that out, that's hoodartconsulting.com. Um, come and talk to me. I'm always open, doors open. I uh, love to have a chat about DAM or anything related. 
Um, and thank you, Ed, for having me on today. Thank you for sharing all your cheat codes. Thank you. Cheers.